absolutely phenomenal. What's up everybody? <sighs> Many of you have asked me on the previous video to make a one-shot effects tutorial, so here you go. Today we are going to cover two one-shot effects in Serum, the ones that you saw at the beginning of the video. Both of these effects are actually quite easy to do, and I will encourage you to try it out yourself and add your own flavors to it after this tutorial. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. All right, guys, so let's listen to both of the effects soloed. Cool, so we're going to start with the first effects, which I like to call one shot bend effects. Let's listen to it by itself with the preset on here so that you guys can see how it looks right now. Lots of crazy stuff going on. Let's get started. So first thing, we grab Serum and we go Initialize Preset. So we're going to use both oscillators. The first one is going to be the Serum standard sawtooth wave table. We're going to bring that down one octave. The second one is also going to be one octave down, but we are going to use the Acid. The Acid wave table is great for creating, well, Acid Psytrance sounds actually. And yeah, we're going to use that. Both oscillators are going to have nine voices of unison. And we are going to bring the detune down for now, but this is going to be automated by an envelope. So bear with me. Let's turn on the filter section before we uh, move on. So we're going to assign the filter to both of the oscillators and we are going to use the high pass, high 12, which is a high pass filter of 12 dB per octave. We're going to bring that resonance up to, not 50, 40%. And as you see here, this is something interesting in Serum that you should probably know, is that for this particular filter, when I bring the resonance up, see how the line over here goes down? It goes below this main line over here, which let's say is the zero dB mark. So this filter naturally brings everything else down to create this resonance. So to compensate for that, we have to bring up this fat knob over here. As you see, it brings up the rest of the thing. So we bring it up to 50% to compensate for the resonance that we added here. We're also going to add a little bit of drive just for the sake of it. And now let's shape the envelopes. The first envelope is going to be the same thing. However, we're going to have a little bit of a tail on the release. I'm going to set it to 150 milliseconds. Let's turn the lock on so that the view is better. And the second envelope is going to be shaped a bit differently. So we're actually going to use the hold feature here and we're going to set it to an eighth note. We're going to bring the sustain all the way down to zero and then the decay is going to be another eighth note. Now I'm going to bring this up like this a little bit. Cool. And we are also going to use the third envelope. And the third envelope is going to go all the way down to zero on the sustain and we're going to put a quarter note on its decay. Again, I'm going to bring the curve up like this. I think this should be fine. Now let's start assigning these envelopes to what we want. So this effect has a bend and that's why I call it a one shot bend effect. It's because it bends the pitch down after a certain period of time. And this is why we had the hold on. The hold will keep the pitch on its original value for an eighth note. And then after the eighth note has passed, it will gradually go down in pitch. So we're going to assign that to the course tuning of both oscillators, but we want it to go only one direction. So again, we're going to hold alt shift and then click on it again. Same thing for the other one. Now, if you may have noticed, the value is in 19 on both oscillators and it is 19 for a reason. 19 is the value that will bring you an octave on the course tuning. So every time that you want to make something that is precisely an octave, you go to the value 19 in Serum. So now let's assign envelope number three to the things we want. Remember that I put the detune down on both of the wavetables? Well, we are going to modulate that with envelope number three. We're going to set this to 50 on both of them. 
So we're going to start with a detune and in the space of a quarter note, it is going to down all the way to zero. But we are also going to assign envelope number three to the wavetable position, just all the way from 100 to zero. We're also going to assign this to the cutoff. Again, I want it to go only one direction, so I'm going to hold Alt, Shift, click on it again, and I'm going to bring this value over here down to 200. And this is going to go, let's say up to 30, something like that. Let's hear how it sounds now. Okay, so the filter is a bit too extreme. So we're going to bring this down to, let's say 120. And let's hear how it sounds now. Perfect, this is what I want. This already sounds pretty good, but we need to go to the effects section and add some stuff. So let's start with the distortion. We're going to go to hard clip, bring that up to 50%, and then we're going to use some phasing. Now with the phaser, we're going to bring the rate down to zero, depth all the way down to zero. The feedback is going to be at 50%. Now let's bring this down to let's say 200 hertz and then this envelope is going to affect the frequency. Let's bring it to a value of 30 and let's listen to how it sounds now. Amazing, I love this sound. But I still want to tweak a little bit of the phaser parameters. Let's go down to let's say 120 again. Let's bring this down up to 40 and I'm going to bring the mix down to like 50 because the sound of the phaser is a bit too predominant right now. There you go, perfect. After this, we're going to add a chorus. Now with the chorus, I'm going to leave every setting the same except for the low pass filter over here. So if you click on it, it would actually change from low pass to high pass on the filter for the chorus and it will sound like this. It adds a bit of stereo width, a little bit of detuning, but the mix is a bit too high, so let's bring that down to 30%. Now, just to add a bit more color to this, I'm going to bring up the EQ. We're going to first cut the lows from this. So, yeah, at 200 hertz, we're going to do some low cutting. But on the second parameter over here, we're going to go to the bell type. We're going to keep this at 60%. The frequency is at 2000, but now we can grab the envelope number three and bring this down like this, like minus 30. So now we bring the gain down to zero. So the EQ is going to sweep from the low mids all the way up to 2000. So let's hear how it sounds without the EQ and with the EQ. It just adds a bit more color to the sound. And now we're going to go to the delay. And on the delay, we're going to use a quarter note dotted on the left channel. And we're going to bring the second one up to a half note. And we're going to make that dotted as well. Feedback can stay at 40%. We're going to narrow this band over here like this. And the mix can go up to 40%. Let's listen to how it sounds now. Good. Now it's starting to have this delay sound that is very typical in Psytrance, but it still needs some ambience on the reverb. And then after that, we're going to bring up the multiband compressor just to squash that ambience and bring it up. So first we're gonna to go to the reverb, bring it up right after the delay. And the size is going to be, let's say a six second delay. We bring the size down to like 25%, cut a bit of the lows on 30, and the mix can go up to 30%. Let's listen to it now. Awesome, the reverb is good, but if you listen to this thing with the kick and bass on top, the ambience actually kind of gets lost. Let me show you. So to fix that, we're going to go back to Serum and add a multiband compressor, which is the same thing as the OTT from x for Records, which is actually a um, free compressor from them but it is built in in Serum. And it's a great compressor that does like over the top multiband compression slash exciting slash saturation kind of thing. And it is a great sound design tool, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Do not think of it as a compressor. It is more of a sound design tool than anything else. Let's bring this attack down all the way to zero and let's listen to how it sounds now. <laughs> 
Now you can hear that the reverb and the delay are all of a sudden much more present, but we don't need all of these lows. So I'm just gonna bring these lows all the way down to zero. And this is the final result. We're going to compensate for the compression and we're going to bring this up to 9 dB on the gain section just to compensate the loss of volume. I still want to bring the reverb up 40. Now there's still one last thing that we want to add, which is the noise section over here. I left this last because I wanted to show you how it sounds without the noise, which it does sound fine and you can use it without the noise, but sometimes you want it to cut through the kick and bass a bit more. Let's listen to how it sounds without the noise section on. It sounds perfectly fine, but if you add some noise, sometimes it will it will just kind of glue the whole thing together, if you know what I mean. Let me just put this to mono before we go in. Cool. So let's go to the noise section. We turn it on. We're going to go to Enharmonics, Enharmonic 0. The noise section is going to be routed to the filter section, so let's turn this N button on, which is the noise section. That means that the noise section is going to be routed to the filter section. We're going to grab the envelope and we're going to modulate its pitch. Again, I only want it to go one direction. So Alt, Shift, Click. There you go. We're going to bring this down to 25. So the level is going to go up to 75%. And let's listen to it now. Cool, it does make a difference. In my opinion, it blends the whole thing together and it cuts through the mix a bit more when you listen to it with the kick and bass. Let me give you an example. Now this is with the noise, let's listen to it without the noise. Now in this particular example, it actually sounds pretty good without the noise, but this is with an example with only the kick and bass. When you have more elements going in, like hi-hats and snares and all sorts of leads and stuff like that, you might consider putting the noise on, but you can always turn it off. It really depends on the application. Cool guys, this was the first effect. So let's jump to the second one shot, which is the ramp down LFO effects. Let's listen to it by itself with the serum screen on. All right, let's get started. So initialize preset. First oscillator is going to be Siren's Sawtooth, down one octave. Oscillator B is going to be a digital wavetable that is called Dist C2. This is also going to be down one octave, but we're going to detune both oscillators from each other. So this first is going to be 20 cents off negatively, and this one is going to be 20 cents off positively. This kind of creates a sort of um, analog feel to it. Classic analog synthesizers always had a little bit of detune going on between oscillators. So when you do this in digital synths, it actually creates that feeling of a analog synth. So we're going to use nine voices of unison on both oscillators again. Nine. Like this, we're going to bring it down to zero again. And let's turn on the filter section already. I'm already going to assign the noise because the noise section is also going to be turned on. But this time, as I already gave you the example, I'm going to set it up right away. So we are going to go to organics and we're going to use air can one. Level is going to be all the way up to 100%. And now let's use some envelope modulation. The first envelope is going to have a buildup of one bar. So we're going to type one slash one. Let's turn the lock on. And the second one is going to have the same shape, but inverted. So we bring the sustain down to zero and we put on the decay one one. So that means that this one is going to go one bar downwards and this one is going to go one bar upwards. And this one is related to the volume of the whole patch. Now let's assign envelope number two to the detune of both oscillators. We're going to set it up to 75%. And envelope number two is also going to be 
route it to the wavetable position of the second oscillator all the way up. Now we're going to use an LFO for this. So we're going to assign LFO number one to the cutoff. We're going to Alt Shift click on it so that it goes only one direction again. This is going to go to 30 and we're going to bring the cutoff down to 120 hertz. And the shape is going to look like this. There you go. We're going to set it up to trigger. We're going to turn off the BPM sync, bring the rate down to one hertz. And now we're going to assign envelope number two to the rate. And we're going to bring it up to 40. There you go. So what's going to happen is that this envelope is going to start the rate of this LFO all the way up the range here to about, let's say, I think it's going to be around 18 hertz. And then as the envelope ramps down, the rate is going to go slower. So the sound is going to start oscillating the filter very quickly. And then as time passes, it will start to go slower and slower. But we're not going to use a low pass filter this time. We're actually going to use a band pass filter, band 24 over here. Um, the resonance is still going to be at 10. We're going to bring this fat up to 50 and the drive up like 10%. So we're also going to use envelope number two to modulate the cutoff. We're going to put it over here and set it to 40. So now, even though the LFO is moving this thing up and down, there's also another force acting on the cutoff, which is the envelope, which means that it will oscillate back and forth through the LFO, starting at a higher position. And then the envelope is going to force this whole range of the LFO down and down and down. So you can actually look at it visually. And that's one of the great things about Serum. So you can see it starts at the top here and it gradually goes down the frequency spectrum without losing this back and forth movement that is coming from the LFO. Cool. So now there's one last thing that I want to assign envelope number two to, which is the pitch over here. So we're going to put it here again, alt shift click only goes one direction and we're going to set this to 25. So now the pitch of the air can, noise is also going to start higher and then go lower. Let's go to the effects section. We're going to start with a distortion. We're going to bring this up to 50%. And now we're going to put a EQ right here, right after the distortion, just to cut some of these lows that we do not need for an effects. We're going to leave it at 200, 210. Okay, so let's add some reverb. So we're going to click on reverb. We're going to use the hall reverb. Bring the size down to 25%. The decay can be really long because I want a very long reverb tail on this sound. I'm going to bring the low cut up to 30%. Cut those lows from the reverb that are not necessary. And the mix is going to be up at 30%. Great. Now I'm going to add a compressor over here. I'm not sure if it's going to do too much gain reduction because the sound is so low here on this meter. But... I can actually use it as a gain stage as well. So I'm just going to put 3 dB of gain here and let's see if it does reduce something. Doesn't reduce much, but I'm just going to use it as a gain stage. I'm going to add 6 dB of volume over here. Cool, so this is the sound. Let's listen to it with the kick and bass on. Great, this is a good sound to lead up to something, to some effects that you want to have a little bit more of attention drawn to. And uh, yeah, um, this is it guys. But you know, these are very simple concepts like the ramp down LFO that starts very fast and then it slows down. But you can also grab this same preset and just change the direction, right? So if you use the envelope number two to change the speed of the LFO, you can actually go a different direction. You can turn this up to like 18 hertz and then affect this range over here negatively. So it will start slow and then it will speed up. You can always use different wavetables. The possibilities are endless. And the same applies to the first effects that we did. There is so much space for creativity in effects for Psytrance. So before we finish this off, let's listen to the whole thing one more time with the preset that I did together with you guys.
So there you go guys, as always, I urge you to try it out yourself and add your own twist to these effects. Effects in Psytrance are especially full of possibilities, they are literally endless. So go do that. If you like my video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, follow me on social media, listen to my music and all of that jazz. Cheers, see you next time.